Hello everyone, still on the properties of binary operations. So far we have discussed about the closure, the associativity and even the commutative properties of binary operations. So in this tutorial I would like to talk about the identity and inverse elements under binary operations. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Let's get started. I would like to start with an identity element. I want you to look at this identity element as do nothing element. It means it has no effect on any other element within the same set. So let's assume we have a set S with an operation asterisk. This operation has to be defined. It could be plus, minus, addition, subtraction, or combination of two or more of these elements. For all, for every element you take, inside this non-empty set S. There exists another element which we call the identity element E in the same set such that A asterisk E is commutative, meaning you can write it as E asterisk E. And this E will not change E, it will remain E. So therefore A asterisk E will be A even E asterisk A will remain E. So it means that uh, E has no effect on E. It will remain E. So what is that element? It depends on the operation. Now let us take plus, for example. If we take addition under the set of real numbers, because real numbers covers all numbers, right? Addition under the set of real numbers. Uh, any element you take from the set of real numbers, let's assume E. E could be 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, it is just a representation. And you connect it with plus with an identity inside that same element, uh, sorry, inside that same set. This is equal to E plus E, which is equal to E. It will not change. So the question is, if A is a number in the set of real numbers, what can you add to E? Add, addition, so that it will remain E. It means that that E has no effect on E. Definitely, that E must be zero. Because A plus zero, even, for example, if A is 10, 10 plus zero will remain 10. And zero plus 10 will remain 10. Therefore, the identity is zero. Therefore, we conclude that Zero is said to be the identity element in the set of real numbers under addition. So under addition, uh, zero is said to be the identity. Uh, where should I write it? All right, I will summarize it in the end. Let us take multiplication because I know subtraction and division. <laughs> okay, the case is different. Multiplication. What is that element in the set of real numbers, which when you multiply it by any other element within the set, it will remain the same. So it has no effect on any given element. So it will be what? A multiplied by the identity, or you can use dot product all the same. This is the same thing as E multiplied by same identity, sorry. E, which is the identity, multiplied by same element you have taken, and it will remain E. So what number can you multiply by E and it will remain E? For example, if A is 5, what number times 5 will make it to remain equal to 5? Definitely 1. Therefore, E in the set of real numbers is 1. That is, 1 is said to be the identity element, in the set of real numbers under multiplication. I don't have to write all of this since I am explaining. But the question is, do we have the same under subtraction and division? Let's test. If we have a real number uh, with an operation minus, can we have an element inside so that when you subtract an identity, identity we told, I told you that it has no effect on that element, it will still be equal to E minus E because it has to be commutative and it will remain E. 
First of all, let us take this connected to this and solve. If we take a minus e, we say it is equal to, um, what do we call it? Equal to e. If you take this one to the other side, you bring this one backward, it will be e equal to a minus e, which is zero. So we have seen that zero is the identity. But what about this one? If we take uh, e to the other side, we have e equal to a plus a, which is 2a. So you can see that this identity is 2a, while this identity is zero, they are not the same, which means that this is not true. We cannot have two identities at once. Therefore, uh, the set of real numbers has no identity under subtraction. The same thing goes to division. Let me show you. If you take division, for instance, you take uh, an element within the set, you divide by the identity, which will not change it. It will be commutative, right? Meaning you can interchange the elements and it will still be equal to E. All right, let us take this one and solve with that one. If A divided by E is still equal to A, it means that E must be equal to one because A divided by one must be E. Like 20 divided by one will be 20. Therefore, E here is one. We have seen that the identity is one. So what about this one? If you have E divided by A and this is equal to A, definitely E will be equal to, you know, A is divided here. Once it crosses over, it will multiply A times A will be A squared. But one and A squared are not the same and we cannot have two identities. Unlike here, what, uh, what, what number can you add to another number so that that number will remain the same is zero. What number can you add to a number like two so that it will remain two? It is zero. So you see in both sides, you get the same number zero. But in this case, the left hand side, we got one, the right hand side, we got a squared. It cannot be like that. Therefore, it is only addition and multiplication that contains identity. So we say that, uh, one is what? The multiplicative identity. Zero is what? The ident uh, additive identity. You get the difference between them? So under addition, we have zero. Under multiplication, we have one. But it depends on the operation. Sometimes you may see another operation which is not one of these four basic operations. All right. Now, let's go to the inverse elements. Therefore, we are not going to talk about division and subtraction since they have no identity because you can only get an inverse when you have an identity <laughs> I'll, I'll show you in the moment um, let me use almost the same definition if you have a set s define with an operation asterisk. Um, we know that E is in the set, right? S, which is our identity. Then for all, sorry, for all elements you have taken, any single element you have taken from this non-empty set, there exists another element, let's call it A, uh, inverse, something like this, belongs to the same set. Such that, such that, this A connected to A inverse will be the same thing. It will be commutative. A inverse with the operation, then A, this will be an identity this time around. This is why I told you we are not going to use division and subtractions since we realize they have no identity. So the question is, now what is this inverse? For example, under addition, let me take addition. If you take the set of real numbers under addition, we would like to pick any number at random from this real numbers, let's say A. 
you connect it with plus, right? Plus an identity element. This time around, I would like to call it another name. Or should I? Let me just continue with this A inverse. It doesn't matter. I want, I want to let you know that this is just a representation. We are representing A inverse to be the inverse of A. But it is not necessarily A inverse, right? It could be for 2. It could be negative 2. You understand? This must be commutative. So A inverse plus A, which is going to give us identity. And you know that identity is 1 under what? Addition. All right. So the question is, let's take this one first. If, no, sorry, on the, sorry, it should be zero uh, because the identity on the addition is zero. Sorry for that. It's supposed to be zero. Now, the question is, what is this A inverse if you have an element A plus it inverse, the result is zero. So what is this A inverse? You may decide to solve it from the left-hand side or from the right-hand side. We know that this must be equal to this. So let me take the left-hand side. A plus A inverse equal to zero. To find A inverse, you can subtract A on both sides. If you subtract A here, it is gone. Subtract A for zero, you have minus A. Wow. So it implies that uh, the inverse element of A on that addition is minus E. This is true for the right hand side. I don't have to test it, but let me use numbers so that you understand clearly. Let us assume you have a number 2 plus it inverse. Assuming you don't know it inverse, let's call the inverse B. And you realize that this is equal to 0. Now, what is this inverse? Just subtract 2 on both sides and B will be equal to minus 2. Therefore, the inverse of any element in a set is negative that number provided you are talking about addition on that addition any number you pick like 10 it inverse will be minus 10 1 million it inverse will be minus 1 million it will undo it and give you output as zero so therefore the inverse of any number in the set is minus that number since we have two it inverse is minus two we have a it inverse is minus a you understand all right, if this is the case, let's see what is the inverse under multiplication. Under multiplication, do I have more space there? All right, let's assume we have a set of real numbers under multiplication. The same thing, if you take an element from the set, which is A, you connect it with multiplication. If you multiply by its inverse, then you shall obtain 1, which is the identity. Remember, under multiplication, we have the identity to be 1. And remember, it is commutative, so you have to make sure that this is also true. So either this, you can solve this or this. All right, so if we are to solve the left-hand side, A multiplied by its inverse is equal to 1, then what is that inverse? That inverse has to be equal to 1 divided by A. All right, it means that any number you have taken or chosen at random from the set, its inverse is going to be 1 over the number under multiplication. But make sure that that number is not 0. Why? You know, we don't divide by 0. So we can even add for all non-zero elements. Non-zero element. elements. Any other non-zero elements you have taken at random, its inverse will be 1 over that. Let us use numbers as examples. For example, let's choose 4. 4 multiplied by its inverse. Let's say B is its inverse. This is equal to 1. Then you solve for B to get the inverse. B will be equal to 1 over 4, right? By dividing both sides by uh, 1 over 4. And let me show you that this is true because we said that if you multiply them together, you, you're going to get an identity element which is 1. So we have seen that the inverse of 4 is 1 over 4. 
So it's four times its inverse, which is one over four, the same thing as the identity. Four times one over four is indeed four over four, which is one. The same thing goes here. If you take a number, you add to its inverse, you're going to get the identity. Let's take a number which we have seen here, two plus its inverse, which is negative two, will this give us zero because zero is the identity here. Two plus minus two is the same thing as two minus two, which is zero. Yeah, this is true. So I think I have fully explained everything you need to know about identity and inverse. Number one, you should know that zero is said to be the uh, additive identity under real numbers. And one is said to be the multiplicative identity under multiplication, right? In real numbers. And the inverse element under addition is what is the minus of that particular element under addition any number you take it inverse is minus the number but under multiplication the inverse of any element you have taken at random it inverse is one over the original element you have selected except zero because we don't divide by zero what else subsequently we are going to be solving problems related to binary operations you will see how we define operations just like uh, you may see a asterisk b to be equal to uh, a times b minus a divided by 2. in this situation since you don't know what an asterisk is but it is an operation it has to be defined unlike if you see a plus B, you know, this is a concatenating operator. It means you should add the quantity A and the quantity B together. But if you have this, this is out of the four basic operations we have, it has to be defined. So in this case, I decided to define A asterisk B to be A times B minus A divided by two. Thank you for watching till we meet in our next tutorial.